Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. We've got Mario, Frank, and Craig here tonight. How come? How come we've made the effort to come in there to those two? They don't want us next to you, Craig. Right. I'm sorry, mate. Yeah. How come? I think I think Frank's actually heading here in the summer. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Bristol. And I'm going to talk a lot. I'm going to and 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 uh, by the way, Kate, the the uh, Lyon player is called Cacre. In French, uh, with the, when you have a T at the end and you have no, and you have you don't have anything behind and you have only one T, you don't pronounce it. So it's Cacre. 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 Yeah, all that prep. Sounded just like <laughs> you're supposed to come in and look at it and you've balls it up. Yeah. When Frank comes in the summer, right? Cacre. If, if Frank comes in the summer, which he is, if Frank's coming in the summer. He always comes for the big tournaments. He's very elitist, is our yep. Frank. But he'll be if he's staying if he's if he's staying in West Hartford, it'll be like the apocalypse, won't it? If somebody tells people in West Hartford that he's coming, he'll get there and they'll be like, there's nobody around. Oh, that's not kind. <laughs> I'll be waiting outside for his autograph. And you'll see probably see Don Hutchison taking pictures of stop signs. God, this is great in America. Stop signs. <laughs> what, 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 this is true, Mario. It's true. Yeah. You Don Hutchison was America? very excited about stop signs. American things. Yes. Yeah. Very excited about America. Oh, a stop sign. Oh. Let's see if Chelsea have got you excited with these back-to-back 3-1 -back wins. Did those goals by Connor prevent another session from the positivity corner? Yep. Yeah, but Liverpool's come. City's coming up. <laughs> yep, just it off. The positivity City, corner could City, be featuring City's soon. City's coming up in Liverpool. It could all go downhill very quickly. Yeah. Which, team is, which team is harder to figure out from game to game? Man United or Chelsea? Mario. Oh my God! I think I think both sides are in a similar position. But um, if I have to pick one, I think yeah. Oh, I'll, because maybe because it's a, then I have to look at it as a fan. If you look at it as a fan, I mean the Chelsea roller coaster hurts more than the Man United because you're not a fan of them. But on the on the other side, I already told you, both teams are in similar ups and downs. But Chelsea is the one that I say like yeah, that affects me the most. Which car park would you rather be parking in at the moment, Frank? We had this question before. Would you be rather driving up to Manchester United as a player there right now or Chelsea? I will never park at the <laughs> Manchester United <laughs> parking lot. You know? Leave me alone with I have that. A chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a former Chelsea player and I can analyse and comment and be nice to Manchester United when they play well, but I will never park at Old Trafford for sure. Oh. I think they I think the walk from I think the walk from I, I'd imagine the players don't quite park in the same area as the broadcasters but it's not far away. It's a little bit of it's a little bit of a stroll down to the end and then the supporters are fenced off. Yeah. Uh, but you know you can hear them. Chelsea's a little bit of a walk if they're parking in the hotel the underground car park, which I don't know if they are or not. So, yeah. We, we did for a long time, okay. you're right. We did for a long time. I think my friend was there too. But then afterwards, they put the gates, so they kind of protected us how we got into the stadium. So I think they start doing that at the end because my last time, I remember they guide them a little bit into it. But I told them, say, yeah, they guide you. From Chelsea, they guide you into the stadium and then you go from the back end and get to the, to the dressing room. And of course, Frank had his entourage and his bodyguards. <laughs> when I was at Cel when I was at Celtic, we, used, course, to park in the we used to park in the little school, which is quite which is quite close to the main entrance at Celtic Park, but it wasn't close enough. And uh, whenever there was a bad result, which wasn't too many, but there was the odd bad result in a very big year, <clears> which was a lot of pressure, a lot, of, just a horrendous amount of pressure in '97, '98. And the boys used to go in the, the players' lounge after, obviously, for a few couple of beers and see the families. And then they would send a, we'd always send a security guard out if the result had been bad to ask if the, if the large crowd had dissipated yet. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and it, the word used to come back would be like, no. Uh, let's have another one then. We'll give it half an hour. <laughs> have they gone? No. They could have been. But you know, you been... know, Kay. When, when I signed for Chelsea, that was crazy. But that was unbelievable that we had to park behind the stadium where the museum is now and uh, uh -huh. and we had to walk and we had no security 
it was completely you know safe and we are we never had any problems and we are in the middle of the fight with the fans i remember one day losing <laughs> a big time and uh, and getting out very quickly because i had to catch a flight straight after and i was even with the fans because i took a quick shower and i never had any problem never and it was in 96 97 98 and then after we we had as mario said we had to park underneath the hotel but we had to walk for like yeah. i would say 200 yards and we, <laughs> we had no problem i never thought you know i, I feel in danger mm. i don't i didn't need a bodyguard as you said you know i <laughs> You know, just a smile, and uh, that was enough, and uh, everybody was uh, was cool with us. Yeah. Is Was going back as a broadcaster? Trust me. Well, it's not Was. I don't really care. But... Well, it's because of the things you say. Well, I'm, sitting, <laughs> I'm very uh, down the middle, <laughs> sit on the fence. But you know, I, I've been to a lot. I mean, obviously, I've been to a lot of grounds, and uh, let me just say, fans. A lot of fans, it's not difficult for them to get irate. Yeah. And, but it is, it is what it is. You, <laughs> you put, How you did you yourself... experience the Fulham one? Greg, tell them about the Fulham ground. When it was Fulham? you did the time. Fulham, yeah, the stadium. Going into the dressing room and to the field. How small the dressing room was. Oh, yeah, well, it's tiny. <laughs> well, it's a cottage, isn't it? Yeah, then, then, then a while they had like one of those party cabins, I remember, at Craven Cottage. And you have to park on the street sometimes <laughs> and it's in amongst yeah. the houses and... Yeah, but they're, they're very posh in Fulham, you know, so they're, you know, they're quite posh. It's a very posh part of London. You know, you phone the fire brigade, they say who recommended us, all that sort of stuff. So that's not too bad. But fans do remember what you say. You said that. You said that. You said that three weeks ago. So, you know, you have to. But it's part of the job. As long as it doesn't get physical. If it's just verbal, then that's, that's fine. You put yourself out there, you. The next question for you, Craig. Oh, no. Should West Ham stick with Moyes and give him a renewal, or look to change? You know, this is a really, this is a really difficult one. I mean, I'm sort of conflicted here because West Ham were a club that was either going down or facing relegation, bit topsy turvy, bit up and down, and he has brought. There is no doubt he has brought stability, as well as success. You know, they were, uh, they won the Europa Conference. I know it's not. A huge thing, but it is for them. They were pushing the top four at one point. I think it was last season or the season before. They were in. They're currently in the Europa League, I believe. Mm. They've had this great European run where they've picked up almost more points than anybody. So you have to balance that with the style of football. And I think that's where West Ham fans are coming from. Is it's it's the style. Now it's not so much yesterday's drubbing by Arsenal but I think it's the way that they play and I am conflicted because he has brought a great stability to the football club they will ne not even a discussion never have been about being relegated really since he's been in there for a, for a period of time uh, is the football great at times <laughs> it's, it's not so I, 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 I'm six and two threes with this one yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the guys think. I, I don't yeah. know. It, what, what, what do you? What way would you guys go? I mean, he's done. He's done a pretty good job there. It, yeah, because they're still like what is it, eight or something? So for me, it's kind of like I understand the people uh, questioning it, but where they come from and where he has them now, it, like I, I think there's a, a lot of uncertainty yesterday in a way. But I think maybe what what the question would be, uh, what I think is, there was a moment when West Ham was that high. And I think maybe the fans got a little bit carried away in the sense of like, oh, look where we are now. And then start dropping. And I think that became a sensitive aspect for them. But look, if you, if you, Moise has always been a coach, his main focus is always, I don't want to get beat. And then he started thinking about how I'm going to play. And if they want something else away from that philosophy, okay, I understand that they might be looking at something like that, you know. But if that is not the case and they want to be like, okay, guys, we keep on building this slow momentum because it's not like you're going to be super fast and hitting the top four straight away, then there is no need to, to panic yet and stay calm. But if they bring the panic in, wow, then it's going to be, uh, I know, okay, they didn't look against Arsenal, but what did you expect? You're playing against a team that's playing great football and you're the team that has 
you know, maneuvers ups and down. You, you, you're still higher than Chelsea. So at least <laughs> that doesn't happen all often. I love it. You're still higher than Chelsea. So don't worry, it's not all so bad. So, <laughs> what, what, I would say, what I would say with this is that, that, that there's been examples of owners want to change the way a club goes about its business. You take a couple of clubs, at least a couple, and I'll give you another one on top of it, it was Bournemouth. Gary O'Neill did an amazing job, amazing <laughs> job, and he's doing a good job at Wolves. I got beat at the weekend, but he's doing a good job, really good job at Wolves. Uh, and he did at Bournemouth, but they wanted to, they not only wanted to be, to be safe from relegation, but they wanted to change the style of play. <clears throat> so did Tony Bloom at Brighton. Chris Hutton, a very experienced manager, and did, did a great job there. But it was very sort of West Ham-esque in terms of how Brighton went about their business. And Tony Bloom said, we, we want more than that. And so Graham Potter comes in and now Roberto De Zerbe comes in and all of a sudden the football over the past three or four years has been, been, been excellent. Tottenham is the same. One of the problems for David Moyes is, is that the game changed many years ago from just about going to watch for the fan and it was just about results. Results are the most important thing. But, it, but th this game has never been more an entertainment business than it is now. Because ticket prices are more expensive than they've ever been. So it's more uh, costly for individuals and people to take young kids and families to go. And whether we agree or not, people want to be entertained. They, they, they want to go on a weekend or whatever it is, and they want to be entertained. Now they can all see how everyone else are playing. And they can see what Brighton are doing, they can see what Bournemouth are doing, they can see what Tottenham are doing. They clearly know what the big guys, the real big guys have done. Uh, but all these other clubs want a piece of this. Right. And so the fans, I'm not going to call them snobby or elitist, it's not. They want, they want more bang for their buck. And that's, got, that's a problem for David Moyes, is that they, they, and, and you can't blame them for this. They want to go, they want to get, they want to see good results and they want success and all that. They want to, they don't want to be relegated, but they want to see some good football. And, and I think that's going to be a big problem for David Moyes over the next couple of months. What do you think, Frank? Keep him or change him? Um, I, I agree with, with Craig when he said that uh, he stabilised the club, but the football is not great. Um, but, you know, he maybe don't have the players that he doesn't have the player that he would need to go a little bit better. But it's not this way of playing. It's not the way of thinking the football. And I, again, agree with Craig where you have to entertain the people and make the football better. It's what it is. And it's why maybe Conte, Mourinho, maybe Moyes and some others who are from the former school, I would say the older school, will disappear uh, sooner or later because uh, you need to show something else and football like players they are they change and um, they get different we don't say better but they get different according to what the fans wants to see and uh, yeah they want to see it because we pay I have to I have to I have to pay my uh, my membership for three different channels in order to follow uh, the Premier League or the League One or the Liga or the, the Bundesliga is completely different where before it was only one channel and some some of the games were for free. And you can't see a game if you don't pay on TV. And, and, the, and, the, and the seats are very expensive as well, especially in the Premier League. So they want to see something. They want to see a spectacle. And they, I, I, they don't really see that, that uh, uh, with West Ham. No, and there is one channel that talks about it all. It's right here on ESPN. I think, <laughs> I, I think, I think, I think we're yes. going to see Graham Potter at either Palace or West Ham very soon. If I was interested, that question came off. Craig will be back tomorrow if the snowstorm doesn't stop him. Make sure to join us then. I'll, ba I'll battle my way through.